Hey there, everybody. Hey. Welcome. How's to- everybody doing today? Welcome to, is that our third episode? It is number three, yes. Number three, Sounds of Science. <laughs> Two guys talking about talking about science. Right. It's so meta. Meta, meta. <laughs> <laughs> present about presenting. Use visuals to visualize visuals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the best way to learn is yeah. to give examples and illustrations like that. Uh, so we should be live. I see Mark Bear. I see you live on my stream. I don't see me I am live here on live. my stream, but that makes that probably makes sense because I probably don't get a notification for myself being live on LinkedIn. There we are. You I see live. us now. Uh, we'll see as we'll see as people join us. Um, as you do join, please post a post a comment where you're from and a favorite teacher or or presenter. We're talking mm-hmm. about not just teaching, but but presenting as well. And what that, um, what their presence was. So we're talking, we're talking today about presenting presence. Um, and, and in order to kick that off, I guess, Mark, I just ask you like, so when I say presence, what does that mean? You know, high level, what that means to me is a performance mindset, which is different from your regular everyday kind of attitude as you go through life. You know, you go through everyday things. It's a it's a different mindset that is really more focused on connecting with your audience and figuring out ways to do that that might be more dramatic. Um, and uh, I'll ask you, Andy, right back at you. What do you think about when you think about presence? I think a bit about charisma and passion. So I think about it. Um, I totally get what you're saying from a, from a performance standpoint, because there's a, there's a performative aspect to it. But to me, there's also a, a like authenticity and, um, identity and core and you know when we when we see a broadway show they have a presence they're performing but it's not them but when i see a when i see a presenter i i want that performance aspect that that you're alluding to, but I also want it to be them. I want it to be authentic. Mm-hmm. So I wonder what you think about how do we, like, am I crazy? Should we not worry about authenticity or do no, we worry I, about it? And if so, how do we, how do we, um, how do we balance performance and authenticity? Yeah, that's a great question. And we absolutely need to always be authentic and real because people can see through kind of a, a fake overly dramatic overwrought maybe performance. So I think when I'm talking about performance, it's kind of like an amplification of who you are in real life. So it is you for sure. It needs to be, you need to be comfortable with this, but talking about things like being deliberate on how you're going to pause during the presentation to make a point, what are you going to repeat? How are you going to move, you know, to keep people interested How are you going to modulate your voice? You know, these are all elements of you, but you're being a little bit more deliberate here because the number one thing that you have, it's like a bit, what's a business? Well, you don't have a business if you don't have customers. You don't have a presentation (laughs) if you don't have listeners. If you don't have listeners, right. I got to do it. I got to do a quick shout out. I see a a Carl Zakar. Is it the Carl Zakar that knows my brother, Chris Churchill? (laughs) Can I ask that question? Which case, it's been a long time since we saw each other. And if not, I know another Carl Zakar. Um, good to have you here and, and appreciate you your comment about authenticity. Yeah, I think it's how do we so so how do we do that balance with with authenticity and performance, performance and authenticity? How do we think about um, being being on stage? And as you said, um, you know, pausing, 
giving giving space for people to listen. Right. Uh, which is what pauses do, right? Rather than bombard, 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 I, I give you an idea and, and let you listen. For sure. And I think energy is also a part of this. You know, you may not, in your regular day, you 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 may not just kind of burst into the living room and just start, or a classroom, or or you know, just start to demonstrate, you know, how how excited you are and all those things and share your passion, like you're saying, Andy, before. Um, but when you're presenting and you've got a topic, if you don't do that, if you don't give that energy to the audience, they're really not going to give you back engagement. If right. you do, yeah, you know, so I'd like say give energy, get engagement. And I like that. It's, give energy, it's, get engagement. Yeah. And it's real too. I mean, I, I think we always want to keep in mind, and thanks for underlining this, Andy. This is all within the context of being your authentic self. You do have to be comfortable with it. That being said, you always have to be mindful of there's no presentation without listeners. And listeners need a certain degree of diversity in their in the content that's presented, in the in the way it's presented, in the way it's delivered to keep them interested. Yeah, I love that. Um, so Joanne just put one one type of um, emotion that might help us connect those. That's mm -hmm. passion. Yes. So if we're if we're passionate, um, then that performance of excitement and commitment is authentic because we actually are passionate. Right. And then just to to play off what what you were saying a moment ago there, Mark, with diversity, I think sometimes. We, we forget that sometimes people get so caught up in being passionate that they forget um, there's, we, we can't enjoy the highs. So we can't enjoy your passion if we also don't have space. Friend of mine, um, friend of mine, I, I go to this weekly event called Pitch Club and, and people practice pitches friend of mine, one of his favorite pieces of feedback is we can't enjoy the highs without the lows. And it's, I think that's what you meant by the diversity, at least from a voice standpoint of, mm -hmm. of, yep. so there's, there's passion, there's concern, there's empathy, there's like problem solution, right? What is, what could be that classic right. analysis of MLK's, um, you know, Nancy Duarte's classic analysis of MLK's I have a dream speech. What is, right? Versus what could be. What is, isn't so good. What is, we're not, we're not happy with the status, but what could be, that's the, I have a dream, right? Right. And it's, right. it's that back and forth, that analysis, that, um, that duality. Um, and the, and the presence. So, so in that sense, presence and presence in that space there's an intensity. Does presence play in, does intensity play into presence for you? Absolutely. And I think it's tying together some of the comments we're getting to, Joanna mentions um, passion, intensity and energy, um, and this modulation of intensity, which you were talking about, Andy, which is so important because if everything's so intense, then nothing is intense. <laughs> right. And if everything is just low energy, then it's so monotone and boring. One thing I wanted to mention too is intensity can be conveyed through physicality, right? Movement. Right. If you're, uh, I'd say two things with, with movement. One is if you move around, so much and there seems to be no rhyme or reason as to why you're moving then that's distracting if you stay in one place then you're you are um, losing an opportunity actually to to give visual interest to your audience remember it's all about uh, your audience paying attention to you and people do pay attention to things that move purposefully so strategically thinking about, I'm going to deliver this point here, and then maybe I'm going to move closer to my audience and ask a question, right? To be strategic oh, that's about, about right. your movement, you know, um, Closer and quieter. Sure. Yeah. 
we have we have first of all welcome carl welcome chris welcome joanne um, if we have some other people here we'd love to have you chime in i wanted to i wanted to read a couple of notes that people left um in the comments leading up to this and and anyone who would like to add a note in the in the chat please do so um so terry Schwartzbeck, we'll we'll stay with the Latin theme, which is where you had started as Martin. <laughs> right, dear. Since you had a middle schooler taking Latin and a teacher who builds a sense of community um, with custom merch, <laughs> so like t shirts and Latin, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, encouraging them to to participate in activities outside of class. Um, where they're like quiz bowl like competitions um, so that the so that the event or in this case the class now has a has a bigger presence than just the moment that's an interesting way to think about presence yeah yeah so thanks for teasing that out absolutely yeah um it's almost the gamification of Latin. <laughs> what else? So if you if you think of um, if you think about presence as trying to be bigger than the moment itself, how might you do that in a presentation? Might you extend beyond the parameters of the the room mm -hmm. and the eight minutes or 14 minutes or 28 yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two thoughts on that, um, which you really alluded to any, when you're talking about the, I have a dream speech. One of them is emotion, right? Um, of course, hope, like, you know, things aren't great now. I have a dream about how they could be. That's really a, a hopeful message. And hope is a very powerful emotion. Uh, and you're reaching people on a different frequency when you start using emotion and not just merely um, facts and figures. You know, how do they uh, feel changing the way they feel, which is much more, which is typically more memorable. Um, and, the, you know, the famous quote we talked about before from Maya Angelou about people will forget about what you said, uh, but they'll remember always how you made them feel. Um, and then um, the other is, uh, you know, there are devices like, um, you know, imagine, right? Uh, and we've we've kind of touched upon this, uh, maybe either during our conversations offline, Andy, or um, you know, in, uh, on uh, or even imagine uh, what could be back right? and forth. Yeah, you know, when you say just the word imagine, of course, that's transporting your listener somewhere beyond the room, and it's really it's really powerful um, uh, way to to make this larger than just 14 slides. Right. We had a good moment of that yesterday with the, the fusion technology um, success coming out of California, the mm -hmm. researchers. And just, you know, imagine if there was zero carbon footprint to producing energy. And, and that technology is basically a zero carbon footprint technology. And I, you know, on the one hand, I'm like, on the one hand, part of me was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then on another hand, I'm like, I, there was a, there was a piece of me too that said, you know, what's going to, if there's no cost to energy, right? Um, how does like, that changes everything. <laughs> right. Because, because embedded in the cost of most things is energy. And, and what is that? You know, we think we consume a lot now. What happens if stuff becomes free? How much would we consume? And, and how would that change how we live? Because right. ha maybe having a cost of consumption isn't a bad thing, <laughs> but it is that imagine. Like, I didn't, so, so all that to say, I didn't necessarily go to um, euphoria when they said that. I also went to, oh, wait a minute. Maybe this would be, maybe this unintended consequences. 
Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but imagine does all that stuff to us, right? Imagine does all that. It gets us thinking. Right. Right. And, um, I just want to respond to one of the comments too, about Dr. Carmen Simon, I'm a big fan of hers. And, uh, you know, she talks about what makes something memorable. Um, and the other thing I would just say on attention, like you don't have a presentation if no one's paying attention, um, is it goes it goes both ways too. Like as a listener, right? I want to feel like you are present in this um, speech or talk, meaning that you're you're actually paying attention to the audience. You're not just uh, looking at <laughs> uh, your slides or your script, um, but you know, that you're actually creating a dynamic that is back and forth and not just a monologue. And that can be done in a variety of ways. I mean, of course, asking questions during the talk, getting this kind of conversation going, um, this kind of movement that I mentioned earlier, like moving closer, making eye contact, um, and, and holding it, not being afraid to, to do that. Um, but if the audience is feeling like, well, the presenter is just up here to deliver this message and they've practiced it and they've got it down and, you know, they're just really not varying their delivery at all. They don't really seem very present. Right. I mean, Andy, how do you feel about that presence? I, I you know, think in it's so interesting. Time? You know, when people, when, when people try to memorize their talk and then they're in their head they're not actually in the room. Right. They're in their head reading their memorized script. They're, they might be looking, they might be making eye contact with people, but they're not actually making eye contact with people because they're not, they're not doing anything. Like you could make a funny face at them and they wouldn't respond because while they're looking at you, they're not seeing you. Yeah. Um, and how do you get to that point, Andy, where you can be, I love that, that what you just said essentially is like, be in the room, not in your head. Right. So how do you get to that point? I, I think of it as being beyond memorization. Mm -hmm. Um, I think of it as, as mastery, not memorization. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So, so when you, when you are, when you master the ideas you want to share, you no longer are relying on memorization. The script is going to be a little different every time. I, I think it's, you know, I, we, we, we all know the expression death by PowerPoint, and part of the death by PowerPoint is that it potentially deletes the presenter from the room because now the presenter is really just interacting with their slide. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, and they're not, they're not in the room with you. They're just following their script mm -hmm. and memorization and podiums. Like, you know, the old classic stand behind the podium with all your notes in front of you. And, mm -hmm. and you're just really reading through from your notes and looking out at the audience, maybe as you, as you look up, but you're not taking cues from the audience. Right. And, and we see this when, when, you know, the audience laughs and, and somebody keeps speaking. It's like, no, stop, let them laugh. But right. they're not listening. Right. They're not taking cues from the audience. <sighs> Got to get to or, that next line that yeah, I memorized. Yeah. I, right. They know the, they know the cue card. They know the moment. I always, I like the analogy of, of presentations being more like jazz than mm -hmm. rock and roll. I did a post about this on LinkedIn the other day. Mm -hmm. And the idea that, you know, a, a jazz song has there, there's music there. That's the same every time. There's like a, a set piece but it's only four of the eight minutes or three of the seven minutes or two of the five minutes. And the rest of it is improv. The yeah. improv though has been practiced. <laughs> it's not improv of like, Oh, I'm going to talk about something I've never done before. It's it's so it's this, 
it's like an or it's like a memor it's like an organic memorization or an organic scripting or a I, I'm not quite I'm not quite sure what to describe it as, but it's different than it's different than memorization. And you can use power you can you can still you you can present like that and use PowerPoint. Yeah. But and- but PowerPoint can also handcuff you which i think is too often what it does and then people end up just being overly scripted and you know i think that the memorization part is is probably a necessary interim step to actually being present because you know the material so well the band is tight like they practiced right. They know, they know that, you know, this section, we got to make sure we're going to hit this section and that section, like we know that. And then we have an overall structure that we want to use. Um, but, uh, but it'll be a little different every night. I think just thinking about tactically how to move towards, you know, towards this mastery and this improvisation and this presence is, is knowing the material back in, you know, backwards and forwards. And if you need to have a one line cue, right? Say, you know, I used to do this when I wrote speeches for my boss all the time. It was, you know, the speech itself word for word, and then a one page cover sheet that was bullet points, you know, which were primarily like, you know, the main ideas. And so in that way, you know, taking a glance, okay, here's when I tell the story about you know, the time that uh, I was off, you know, working in this institute. And here's where the time that I, I talk about the specific result that was unexpected. And then being able to just use that information to tell a compelling story, um, you know, that's not completely memorized, right? You did at one time right. memorize that, but it could be a little different. And people, you know, people really feel that. I, I'd say the other one thing about presence is that, Yes, people certainly can feel when you're not present. I don't. I don't know how many people still present behind a podium. It's funny too because the just the mere physics of that presentation. You have the podium is dividing you physically between you and it's the audience. It's what people look like on Zoom. We look like we're behind a podium right yeah. now, right? Yeah, yeah. It's very different. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, you know it. it I think thinking about this idea of presence is so important. Um, and then the question is like, what is it? And we've talked about elements of it. And of course, happy to have people chime in. We, you know, people have been putting <laughs> comments in, in this. Um, we got to get here. We got to get Chris giving you a hard time up there, Mark. Yeah, no good. <laughs> you haven't heard that before. I bet. Yeah, that's okay. No, no, no connection. Um, I have a, I have a quick question that, I, I'll throw out to the audience because we have three or four people with us. And that mm-hmm. is what, what um, you know, Mark and I gave kind of our ideas about presence. What, what are your, like, if you had to, if you had to, uh, I'll give a quick challenge to the audience. Define presence in a single sentence. And while you're doing that, I want to, uh, I want to read a few more off the off the board. Mm-hmm. So Melanie Flores said uh, her seventh grade science teacher, Mr. Perrineau, shout out to Mr. Perrineau if you're still out there. Mm-hmm. Um, he turned a lab session into the great amoeba hunt. Every kid became a shark shooter with a microscope. And I just, like right in my head, I have... Um, this idea of like him, like rolling up his, you know, rolling, rolling up his sleeves and be like, okay, we're going hunting. <laughs> and there's like a story there, right? There's like a, there's a character there. We're going to go find these amoebas and they're going to be hiding from us. And they're going to be, and there's a, there's a presence to that that doesn't sound like normal science directions for a lab assignment. Yeah. 
And, you know, it's funny you say that, Andy, because I think another element of presence for me is the unexpected, right? It's like we're doing something a little different than I expected. It almost se seems fresher, right, yeah. to me as a, as a listener, as an audience member. And that makes me feel like um, you're paying attention to me. Uh, it just, just isn't just the same old, same old that you've done, you know, 20 times before. Uh, Joanne or Chris or Carl or M. Pilar or any other, anyone else out there, anybody, anybody willing to take a shot at the one, one sentence presence definition challenge? I think it's an interesting I'm not sure I'm not sure how I'd do it. <laughs> um but I'd but I'd love to I'd love to uh I'd love to see what people come up with. While we're do while we're doing that, we have one more. Um we had a math teacher who used to roll around shooting with a yardstick. I actually brought my I brought my yardstick. I'm a big believer in props. Props can be good for presents. That's very true. I don't I don't even have a yardstick. I have a level. It's actually quite a big level. Put it there behind me. But I could I could walk around with, you know, my yard my yardstick. Do you guys um, use uh you guys have yards up there in Canada or are you on a metric system? Yeah, it's actually probably a meter. Meters. Right. It's probably not a it's probably it's not funny. a yard. We in Although the US did, are st still way it did behind. Come from Home Depot, so <laughs> uh, well maybe we should do a little bit at the yeah we we've got some responses um also let's go through those and uh we are getting close to the half bottom of the hour so let's let folks know what they can expect level next time. sets first, in this presentation <laughs> yeah. yes so we have one yeah. um yeah like i like has to be involved saying. and challenged Right. That's an involved. interesting. So we right. think about the the like allowing the audience to have a presence. That's a that's a right. great really good. I, I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think of it as um I, I don't know about I, I think of it as being multidimensional. So so when I think about presence, I think about so so allowing the audience to be involved is a is about content so does your content um allow your create space for your audience um and then i think about some other things like voice does your voice have a presence in the room which is not necessarily volume intensity clarity yes volume Sometimes quieter can have a bigger presence than than shouting. Um, and then I think about body language. So for me, that's probably the big trio: body language, voice, and then content and space that content allows or not. But I don't know. I was just trying to. I don't even know why I was trying to do three, except I know rule of three: we should have three of things. <laughs> Yeah, really good. Good stuff. Let's um let's talk about uh as we wind up here what folks can expect in 2023. Is this our last session before the new year? This is our last session before the new year. We take a break. It is. It is. We're going to have a holiday break. I hope everybody has a wonderful, relaxing, safe, meaningful time uh and get uh, gets a chance to recharge and relax over the holidays. So important. Our next scheduled is the 10th of January. January 10th. Okay. And uh, we'll be having information going out about that, where to focus. Um, certainly leave a comment, what you thought of today, ideas that you have, what you'd like to see in the future as far as topics that we address. We've got a lineup for 2023, but we, we, this is not a, uh, you know, this is not a one-way broadcast. Uh, we specifically want to make it interactive, meaning that listeners and viewers have input into what we talk about. We want to make it relevant and valuable um, and hear from you. So love to hear from you on 
what topics would be particularly of interest in uh, the new year. One of the, um, with, with that as lead, I, I noticed over my shoulder, I had my little imposter syndrome destruction from earlier, and we didn't get a chance to talk about that today. But but one of the things that interferes, and, and maybe this will be a topic of a show in the new year, one of the things that can interfere with us, our presence, is anxiety. Um, because it takes a... The kinds of things we were talking about today, the passion, the authenticity, the intensity, um, even you know things like empathy and, and some of the lower things like if we're, if we're sad or frustrated, um, takes a certain vulnerability to allow to show how we feel publicly. And anxiety prevents us from being vulnerable. So we get into a, we get into kind of a slippery, slippery area where if we're anxious, can we be vulnerable? And, and if we're trying to have a real presence and that presence is authentic, but we're anxious, how do we, how do we do that? So we can talk about we can talk about voice and body language and things that we want to be able to do, um, but we probably also should should have on the schedule um, overcoming some anxiety. How do we how do we allow ourselves to do that um, in a in a public space? Because let's face it, public speaking is public. <laughs> Right. Yeah, no, that's a great topic of in and of itself. So we'll get to that next year. So awesome. any, any closing thoughts, Andy? Uh, no, I think happy, um, ha happy holidays to everybody. Happy new year to everybody. Be safe, be well. Um, I hope that you get to spend time with friends and family. I hope that you get to spend times outside of your research labs which can become all consuming for many of us. And um, we'll see, we'll see you in the new year. Wonderful. All right, everybody. See you then. Enjoy the holidays. See you Hi, back everybody. in 2023. Bye-bye. Happy holidays.